The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. Brought to you by Nadex. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNet headquarters. And I am fortunate today to be joined by our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, filling in for Tom. Basil, good morning. Tell me how are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Very well, thank you. Good. Well, thanks for jumping in, joining me on the program. Always excited. Perfect. Well, let's just jump right into it. So a relatively mixed market as we begin things off. You're looking at Dow up about 23 points currently. NASDAQ off less than a point and S&P's up less than a point. Bonds relatively mixed. Dollar off 149 ticks, trading 91.680. Euro up barely, trading at 119.77. And um, yeah, we'll see where this shakes out. Of course, we have Trump talking to the UN. We have a Fed meeting starting today, Basil, of course. That should be interesting tomorrow as they come out with their announcement. Not really expecting any rate hikes, as I'm sure most people know, but it'll be interesting what gets said in that statement by um, Chairwoman Yellen, of course. So, Basil, what are you what are you looking at? I'm jumping back into the, the chair this morning. I was fortunate enough to go see my beautiful New England Patriots play the New England uh, the oh, New Orleans Saints right. this weekend. Tom Brady put on quite a performance. My voice is a little rough, you know, cheering on, but we'll get it back, of course. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Are you you in the stand shouting for the Patriots? Is that it? Oh, I might have been. You know, there was a big Patriots nation <laughs> representing in New Orleans. There, there was. was. Okay, that's There good. was, but great game, of course, and great weekend, but good it's to be so back. Interesting. In it's like, I was going to say, it's so interesting. This is really, we think of it as a sports town, but it's a college town, and it's, I mean, there, the characteristics of Boston actually represent very much what we're looking at in the stock market. There's been a huge change in the, the, the tidal flow of major forces, and uh, we're talking about real estate. So it was a college town. Now it's becoming more like a, like a no, I wouldn't say a big city, but it's more like a, a mid-sized city. Sure. It was always a pretty small city in the sense that, yeah, there were some big buildings, but you can go to many other cities in the country, and they, they, they just as many tall buildings. But like Tampa, got, of course, nothing like Boston, but we have a downtown, you know, we have plenty of high-rises, of course, so I feel that. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Right, and now all of a sudden, we're together with the traffic, and of course, this is a, a very interesting city. It's a city that changes by default. It, it's as if uh, they had the, the, the whole foreshore that there was nothing. It was Anthony's Pier, and that was it, a restaurant, and that was it. In, in 10 years, 10, 12 years, the, the change is forever. Whatever is going on now, instead of designing it carefully, and Boston never does that, it's haphazard, haphazard, and then all of a sudden they say, wait, wait a minute, what about the traffic? Aren't we going to have a... Is there any way to really get from the one part of the city to the other? You know, it's always Of course, backwards. and I'm familiar, just my family, South Boston, and that area blowing up tremendously just because of the familiarity of being right next to the beautiful city of Boston. I was listening to someone talk about South Boston the other day, that families that have been there forever, having paid ten, twelve thousand 12000 for whatever it is that they own, are being offered one and a half to two million for the same property. They have no choice but to leave. Nobody gets right? that kind of money. That's for an opportunity cost that and most people just so, can't right. seem to. You know, they shouldn't turn down. Exactly. Right, and not only that, it turns out that that is. I always say this is what happens in in terms of the um, renovation, the the changes that occur are really for the next generation. Sure, the rejuvenation of all of that, you know, Absolutely. for sure. Well, let's jump into it. Right, is, is what we're looking at in the market. I want you to actually tie that in to say, this is exactly what's going on in the stock market. There have been tidal changes, and what's happened is that money has been forced into the market, and I'm right here at a critical point. We, we're along the Dow for, we've been for, since that, that big move up uh, a week ago. We had a switch to the long side. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, what, what can drag the market down? I'm looking at the, the, the daily chart. Stochastic is at 98%. That is really strong and it's flat. That's good. If, if it makes a curve and goes down, that's negative. The MACD, the moving average, is, is 
very strong. It has gone way above the nine period moving average. There's always a suggestion that it's getting a little choppy, but the weekly chart is still very strong and the monthly chart is very strong. When I say tidal wave, what I mean is that the Dow represents different sectors. And the same thing that I was talking about Boston having different areas that are going through regrowth and other areas are being neglected. So we're looking at the stock market and that's why this is a difficult decision for me because we're in a scene, as you know, in the Chapman wave, we look for D to start making other decisions. You don't have to, but that's where the yellow light goes on. I tell you what, so, Basil, let's get one more opinion while we jump in because we got our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks, on the oh, line. All right, let's yes, see I'm what sorry. you know. Let's yeah. see. Let's see if he's got some opinions in the option world or what. What could possibly stop this motor train of going <laughs> right. higher? Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, Basil. How are we Hi, doing Kevin. this morning, man? How are you guys doing? Well, we're hanging in there for higher markets. That's what we're doing. We got a VIX that had a handle of nine this morning, right? No premium in this market. Um, what are we going to be talking about on the show today as we march higher? We got the Fed meeting, of course, today. What's going right. on? Day one of the Fed meeting, we're going to talk about that. We, we got a big show to talk about. You know what? We're, we're, we're focusing on the material sector in today's show. So we're going to talk about um, Dow DuPont. We're going to talk about Newmont Mining and their effects on the material sector. Interesting. We got a lot of would, gold, would gold followers, of course, Newmont fans, so I'm sure they'll right. be interesting. Go would ahead, Basil. Through the XLB, the uh, yes. S&P Select Materials, great. Because yes, that's very yeah, because strong. DuPont makes up 25.5% of that XLB. So, well, yeah, of course, we'll, we'll be talking about XLB as we do that. Yes. Very That'll good. be interesting. And, and tomorrow, so tomorrow, of course, they come out with um, the statement on the rates. Nobody's really expecting them to go up, down, or anything, but it'll be interesting to see what they kind of say, what Chairwoman Yellen says in those statements as to um, winding down the balance sheet or, or, or just future rates um, and how they're coming into it. You just hit it right on the nose, Tommy. It's, she's not going to make any headlines via a rate hike or a rate movement, but she, she may make headlines via the balance sheet, and she may make headlines via guiding towards December, right? As, as, as you saw, uh, the probability of the, of the December rate hike is still mo you know, moderate, but it jumped in the last week. So it's moved from in, in the 30s and 40s into the 50s in, per, in terms of percentile. So there is some movement in the back in, in, in a December rate hike. So that's what we're watching. Uh, we're going to listen to her comments and see how if she, you know, remember, Janet Yellen does not like to surprise the market. So she, we'll see if she starts guiding towards a December rate hike. And it'll always be interesting. They're looking at the economy. You had housing starts, which were a little bit rough this morning. Um, they're always looking at retail, right? You had Toys R Us, of course, coming out, declaring bankruptcy. Just one-off stories, but it's kind of interesting how all that plays into the economics and, and, you know, those indicators that are coming out left and right that they have to kind of interpret. Right, Tommy. Another corpse in the wake of Amazon, Oof, right? I, and really, the question is, how did they last this long? You, you know, it's it's. I was reading an article, Kevin, this morning, just on Bloomberg, talking about the price of their debt and how the market didn't see it coming at all. And it's and if people should check it out because those bonds were priced at an astronomical price, considering right. obviously the risk that was at play. Yeah, I saw the rumors come out about eight o'clock last night Oof. about the about. Um, about bankruptcy and then by this morning it was done they went back two weeks ago september 5th those bond prices had basically no risk in there at all and talk oh, about right. there was risk right amazing right here 45 minutes folks 11 a.m check it out kevin hinks scott connor kevin have a great show we look forward to it man basil tommy thanks for having me on thank you thank you kevin we'll be right back folks Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien, Basil Chapman. So, Basil, I just wanted to jump in before we jump away from this Toys R Us for some of the stats that I was looking at because they are pretty startling when you take into consideration what we were talking about in terms of big retailers facing the wrath of Amazon. So, um, a day after the U.S. Labor Day holiday, credit, credit default swaps that allow traders to hedge against losses in the toy merchant's debt were pricing in a low probability of near-term default, about 10% based on contracts expiring in June. You could insure 10 million dollars of debt on September 5th, exactly two weeks ago today, for an upfront payment of about $300,000. By the end of that week alone, that upfront cost had surged to $2.5 million, and by Monday, yesterday, that cost was up to $7.7 .7 million. Um, and then fast forwarding, they have some debt curves. So Toys R Us bonds maturing in October of 2018 paint a similar picture. The 7.375% notes traded for as little as 18 cents during Monday's session. But the bond price reporting, let's see, uh, that's down from 97.25 cents two weeks ago. Wow. Um, pretty remarkable that that had, did not have that risk priced in. When you look at something like a, a toy retailer like Toys R Us, where we all know that you can shop for those types of items where they're, they're very similar in terms of you can be a price conscious shopper pricing right. for toys where you know you know what you're looking for, whether you're buying for your children, what's the hot toy of the season, what, what do they want for their birthday. Um, pretty remarkable and you know it's just something to keep in mind as we look at the VIX trading at 9 this morning. Um, no volatility priced into this market as we're at all time highs and we continue to march higher with 
just keeping in mind, you have Trump speaking right now at the UN. Um, he's going to be focusing on North Korea and Iran is kind of the, the headlines out there. And, you know, there's no kind of none of that premium, none of that risk is being priced in anywhere. And maybe this is a lesson just to keep in mind in terms of being aware of the risk that is ever present, even if it might not be priced into the market like it should be sometimes. Yes, but sometimes mispricing um, is sometimes mispricing is either purposeful or accidental. But even if it's accidental, there's a responsibility there, and you have to wonder uh, um, why that happened. Because, as you said, the, the the weight of evidence is that a Toys R Us automatically you think that they should be under pressure. But if I, I bet it's the same way where you are. Aren't there some little toy stores, mom-and-pop toy stores that are opening up, especially with, with um, parents wanting to get the kids educational toys, not necessarily little plastic stuff that you, you used know, to buy? You know, I don't know of that, yeah. but I could, I could see that. I could understand that, where, you know, that... that that's where maybe you could find a niche, right? Where, you know, you can't sell the doll that you can always, that's being incessantly advertised, you know, whether right. it's the talking Elmo, right? You know, that's been, a, you know, yeah, that might be tough because Amazon's going to have a million of them in their warehouse and they're going to sell them at the cheapest price. But if you want to go into a good toy store with some good games that will be right, education-based. Right, original, right. Yes. And not, not only that, I, I think that the focus on young people, on, on the youth, is such that, a lot of people are trying to do something a little different, and it all eats away. It's not like one little store can do it. It's just that everywhere I'm seeing them, wherever I go, I'm always looking because I have grandchildren. So, um, yeah, I'm always looking. I'm finding little places, and places have very unusual gifts. So, yeah, it would have been uh, writing was on the wall, that's for sure. It was just a matter of time. You know, I didn't even realize that Toys R Us was still being traded on the market. That's, fact, you know, I just, the most startling <laughs> thing that I found about that was that, you know, for 7%, um, trading basically, you know, 100, 100 cents on the dollar, 97 cents on the dollar at 7%. That's really putting some risk out there for some yield when to buy a, 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 a toy retailer, um, brick and mortar toy retailer for 7%. That's a gamble. And as we see, that gamble right. did not pay off for that 7% yield. And, and, that being, and, and being a bond, that's a real slam. I mean, that's. Right? I mean, you that's. You don't want that in bonds. Yeah. Oof, I to mean, lose it. Right. Yeah, yeah. To lose almost your entire investment yeah. when you think it's not now good. priced at 18 cents versus 97. So, yeah. So Kevin had mentioned Dow, Dow DuPont. Yes. Now, DuPont is one of the few Dow, GE and DuPont are one of the few stocks that were left in the Dow. The original, uh, the original Dow had GE. It also had DuPont, and it had, I don't think General Motors came until 20, 28, 29. Okay. So there were, there's one other in the, in the Dow that had been for forever, and it, it's gone. So the only one left now is GE. And what's really interesting is that if you look at this chart of DuPont, I, I did this as a, as a focus piece in my one of my webinars uh, this year, earlier in the year. And look at the way it is just, it is so, look at this candle for the month of September. Of course, there's still a week or so to go, but two weeks to go, look, this candle is amazing. Yeah. And uh, this is the monthly candle, and the technicals are good. So when Kevin does this uh, uh, at 11 o'clock, this is really going to be very interesting to listen to. Because the weekly chart, I, I looked at this the other day, and there's no other way I could count it. But in the weekly chart, it's in C. It should still go to a D in the weekly chart. That's shorter term. And right here, the daily chart is a little bit toppy, so I can see it pulling back. But everything about it says that it's 69.98. The 67 to 66 is should be very good support. I'd be very interested. And this essentially is, this is DuPont and Dow. So we're looking at, you know, chemicals that are, that are in actually so many different things. Sure. But it's telling us about the market. And this is what you need to look at. You can't say, oh, my God, what's going to happen to the world and what's going to happen to the United Look at the stocks. Look at the stock market. The only reason why I jumped in on the long side the other day for the Dow, and we actually have nine stocks all on the long position. Fortunately, they're all up. But the most important thing about it is that I tried as hard as possible to separate myself from what I'm reading, what I'm listening to, to what I see on the chart. And the only way I could do it is to say, it looks good, I think it'll go higher. It looks bad, I'm staying away. And I think that that's really the, the theme that I would like to em emphasize right now. Stick with what's working. We're going to this week, I think we should be getting to some kind of a shorter term top see what happens. But I have to tell you, there are some stocks that are, that are market 
sensitive in the sense they're economically sensitive. And I have to put uh, Dow DuPont in that category. Now that they've joined, you would have expected when they joined that they would have plunged because putting yourselves together it, it takes a lot of money, a lot of effort. Sure. And invariably, the, the takeover, uh, the stock that is doing the takeover, pulls back for a couple of months to just digest. And so far, it hasn't done that. So this is so far a good sign. It'll be interesting, that's for sure. And, you know, you talk about materials, so that's where, you know, materials, whether it's the economy, right, um, building, infrastructure, even talking about the rejuvenation of areas like the city of South Boston and, you know, the surrounding suburbs of Boston, far, much far-reaching than even South Boston, you know, the North Shore. Absolutely. Um, growing tremendously. I was just yeah. in New Orleans with a bunch of, bunch of friends from the Boston area, of course, Patriots, and um, it's remarkable, that whole area, kind of the expansion, it's it's going and of course with that becomes the growth and and as you know the city grows those places are being rejuvenated like you said where you know you had families living in them for 30 40 years and then investors come in or or just another family comes in um, younger family and then they're making those renovations of course whether it's you know and then just right around Tampa you have St. Pete you have you know bullish as well great great growth and the city of Tampa growing tremendously you have Jeff Vinnick on the Tampa Bay Lightning and he's oh, teaming up with right. Bill Gates, A former Bostonian, right? yeah, yeah, spending you know billions of dollars to expand that waterside community for sure. Okay, folks, come on back. We got the Dow up 27 points, Nasdaq up five points, S and P up two. Maybe we'll jump over, take a look at Rite Aid. They had Walgreens Boots getting approval for their deal as well as well today. Rite Aid was doing well, off 25 cents now, or almost 10 percent. We'll be right back. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new market-safe emerging currency CD from EverBank. This three-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. EverBank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Tommy O'Brien, Basil Chapman. We got markets higher. Dow up 28 points. NASDAQ up 5 points. S&P up 2 points. And before we jump into Walgreens Boots, take a look at Rite Aid, of course. We're talking about Boston. And my dad and I and Daryl Martin and Mr. Dan Cook, we're all going to be up in Boston two weeks from this previous Saturday. Can't believe it. 11 days away. September 30th, we'll be up there at the Boston Marriott in Burlington, Massachusetts. A great morning session going from about 7.45 in the morning until about 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Five solid hours of hanging out. We'll have a continental breakfast to kick things off. Dan Cook is going to jump up there for about 15 minutes. They're sponsoring the workshop. That's allowing us to do it completely free for everybody. I'm going to jump up there for about 15 minutes talking about binaries. And then Tom's going to jump up there for 90 minutes, do his workshop. We're going to take 15 minutes for coffee and tea, get a little energy. Daryl Martin's going to jump up there for 90 minutes. And then Tom and Daryl will close things off with a 45-minute joint presentation presentation, taking questions and answers. So we're looking forward to that. We're going to get a little of that cool September, fall Boston weather. I tell you, I was looking for a little bit of a reprieve from the Florida heat this weekend, Basil, and New Orleans did not provide it. They they are dealing with some heat on their own. The one thing I can say is um, the beautiful dome that the Saints have was an amazing experience, great time. So it was nice to get a little air conditioning in there because Tampa, of course, they have a great stadium as well, and Tampa had a great game on Sunday. Um, um, but, man, it is intense going to a football game in the Florida heat down here, sitting out for three, four hours, sitting in that sun. So it was kind of nice to get a little dome action. Oh, that's good. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. So just uh, to take a look. So Walgreens Boots, let me pull up. So they had a $4.4 billion deal that was approved today. They are buying 1,932 Rite Aid stores for $4.38 billion. That's about 250 fewer stores than under the previous approval proposal, which totaled $5.18 billion. And this is their fourth attempt, but they finally got it done. And the market did not kind of like what they saw as they started off for Walgreens. They it jumped up to $83 pre-market, and now it's down off about almost 2% trading at 81. And we'll jump over to Rite Aid as well and check out what they're doing. And Rite Aid um, falling as well. So both Rite Aid down but almost. What's, what's the symbol again for it's changed? Uh, uh, for Boots, uh, let me see what it WBA is Walgreens. WBA. Oh, okay. WBA and is Walgreens. So that's down from about 83 to 81. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. Um, and right it is RAD, which is really yeah, getting hit. Brand, that's the slam, 244. It's pretty intense. Yeah. Pretty intense. But in now, the, we, uh, some years ago, uh, we identified this as a turnaround candidate, and we got it about one dollars and fifty cents or something like that, and we just kept riding it up. We had it for about a year and a half, maybe, in different positions, and it was really a successful stock. And then I thought, you know, I think it's done. Yeah. And we got out. It actually went a little higher, then much lower, then came back again, and now it's done. But you know what's interesting? I had always. I heard the name Rite Aid, Rite Aid, and I didn't realize when I was in New York, in Manhattan especially, that's, it's big. Okay. Rite Aid is like CVS over here in Boston, okay. Rite Aid over there. And this, the stores were very shabby. But after a period of time, they were renovating and they, they really did turn things around. So um, it, maybe it's just the industry, because look at this, I mean, up in the eight and nine yeah. area. Uh, last year and now trading at 243 with a takeover. So something was not right. And you so know, maybe was, I was just going to say it's tough to have any conversation without bringing Amazon into the conversation because, of course, say, when yeah. they came after Whole Foods, one of the things that immediately got hit was Walgreens, CVS, because they said, okay, they have a brick and mortar establishment that they, that they can now use as their jumping off point to maybe get into the pharmaceuticals um, and, and medications. And, and man, you know, that is quite a business if you can get the recurring payments that come with the monthly subscription, uh, monthly prescriptions. Absolutely, yes. Um, and there's no reason why not when you talk about an industry that is ripe for just economies of scale, cutting prices, and you do not want to compete with a company that doesn't care about profits, which is what Amazon is right now. Um, so we'll see if they get into that. And we've been saying that for a long time about Amazon, but they are commanding such a, they built an infrastructure that I, I don't know how any other company 
can afford to even compete against them because the cost initially yeah. to uh, the uh, barrier you know to entry, right? I mean, that's what, it's that barrier entries. to entry. You can't yeah. even compete with a company that, and especially when now they didn't have the brick and mortar. So it was like, can they really ship prescriptions to everybody? Because maybe people aren't ready for that quite yet. You know, they're, they're, they're used to going right down to the store where they go and picking up their well, prescriptions. Well, I think so because, you know, you've got um, Express Scripts, you've got, you've got companies that you know, that's what they do. Sure. They do uh, online, you know, they do over the phone, they do it oh, online. Oh, definitely. But what's really interesting about this whole thing is that we've had such a I always have to compare turn of centuries um, if you go to this 1780s thing the, the, what was happening in music and art and in building and in actual inventions it was in the early 1800s that you really saw the fruits of all that labor and then if you look at the late 1880s automobiles telephone electricity it's really the early 1900s where you saw the development of that and now you've got the computer you've got the whole internet everything about what happened in the late uh, 1980s we're seeing the fruits of it so this is the maturing part of it and this is where the the, the wheat and the chaff get you can see the difference so you're going to see who falls through the cracks who survives in the 1920s? You had thousands, I believe, of auto companies. And of course, eventually you had three, and then you had two. And now, what American <laughs> companies are only Ford and General Motors, right? Sure. Uh, because it's Fiat Chrysler. And that, I think, is happening. You've seen it happen in uh, just every single field. So, this is going to be very interesting. And then, this whole maturing is part of what I'm looking at, and I love to look at the socioeconomic, political atmosphere of what, you know, where we are. I wanted to ask you, what are you looking at uh, for the 1030, which has already passed? What were you going to be looking at for the Nadex platform? Well, you know, so what's interesting is that you have API for oil that comes out tonight. We, you know, commodities have been jumping around. Um, gold has definitely been pulling back, which is quite a pullback from like 1366, I think, was somewhere near that high. We're approaching right. 1313 today. But it'll be interesting, I think, to see how the API and the EIA tomorrow um, will come into things. Just with these storms rolling in, oil really did not react at all, which is somewhat interesting to have, of course, all these hurricanes rolling in. They're rolling into the Gulf. They're kind of disrupting the gas market, that's for sure, because you got the refineries shutting down. But, you know, if you said to anybody before the hurricane season began and you kind of told them what to expect just for the hurricanes that were going to roll through and, and kind of come across the shore of the U.S., and you said that oil would almost be an unfazed chart. Um, Rather than 55 or 56. Right, exactly, right. exactly. <laughs> um, so it'll be interesting to see kind of how that plays out, I think. that That's but, what but I was going to take a look at as to, you know, how oil maybe trades this week as, as it kind of digests. Of course, with you have um, another hurricane coming into to Puerto Rico and um, Dominica, they were talking about just uh, really? really harsh um, kind of and damage. Some, and some countries just get hit over and over. That's, Haiti, I mean, just, especially uh, some of those uh, island countries where you know they don't have the type the type of you know, infrastructure, right, right? You know, to to handle those types of things and and the support from the government to kind of rebuild things as quickly. So that's a tough deal to see how that shakes out. Um, okay, come on back, folks. As the hour flies by, the market kind of staying stagnant. Marginally higher, Dow still up 28, NASDAQ up 5, S&P up 2. Basil and I will be right back. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien has just announced that he'll be coming to Boston September 30th for a free workshop, The Art of Timing the Trade. 
Join Tom O'Brien Saturday morning, September 30th at the Boston Marriott in Burlington, Massachusetts as he breaks down his trading methodology and provides you with the tools to become a more successful and profitable trader. Everyone that attends in person will receive a free signed copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. Daryl Martin from Apex Investing Institute will also be presenting for 90 minutes at this free event. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. Join me in Boston on September 30th as I return to my hometown for a workshop about the art of timing the trade. I look forward to seeing all the tigers and tigresses for this special free event. All action starts early at 7.30 a.m. with a continental breakfast and wraps up at about 1 p.m. Topics that Tom will be covering during his presentation include quality volume, cause and effect, ABC structures, swing points, and much, much more. For all the information on this free Boston event taking place Saturday, September 30th, visit the front page of TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits and the Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, everybody. Tommy O'Brien and Basil Chapman. Uh, markets continue to kind of remain calm. Dow up 25 points, NASDAQ up 7, S&P's up 2. Jumping over, Basil, I just wanted to look at AutoZone real quick. So AutoZone came out with their earnings. They were higher pre-market, almost up to 585, down to 550 now, almost $35 off on that stock, trading off 2% for the day. And just to take a look at what their earnings are, let me slide this over so we can take a peek because they beat and they beat good and they are not getting the type of reaction they probably want from the market. So they came in with net income for the quarter to $433 million or $15.27 a share from $426 million in the same period a year before. They had earnings per share at $5.18 versus an, a consensus estimate of $5.11. And they had revenue increased 3.3% to $3.5 billion, 3.51, beating the consensus of 3.49. Some kind of downfall of that, domestic same-store sales grew only 1%, but missed an expectation of 1.6%, but pretty good numbers, and again, just kind of seeing how stocks, the, it's not quite a normal market when you beat across the board, all across everything, and the market says, no, 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 we're going lower. Yes, but you've also, I'm showing the chart here, let me just okay. pull this out. This sure. is one of my, one of, for my subscribers, this is one of our favorite shorts which we had, and then I didn't get back in, and then it just kept going down. It's, I did the analysis, did everything right, but you know, sometimes with the big pops that they have before they break down, that's t tough to deal with. So it hit 819.54, it had this arch formation, but this is the story. It's not what the estimates are right now because those are uh, current. Sure. It's what it's what happened at the top, and the top was back in D uh, July of 2016 at 819.54. And just think of what's happened since then. You've had order sales between 17 and 16 million. That is a huge number, and that's fresh cars. If you're driving in the streets, especially around here, where with the, with the snow and the ice and the, the salt and all that cars deteriorate a little bit or that there's a lot more pressure for them to uh, deteriorate. Definitely that corrosion, they, sure, yeah. Right, the corrosion. When you think of what's been done over the last few years, especially in terms of anti-corrosion, etc., and you think it had that um, cars are lasting a lot longer right now. You think of 17 million cars, and you say to yourself, but cars 
they're actually lasting them way longer than they used to for liability, et cetera. But at the same time, the auto parts, more people are deciding to say, hey, I'm tired of these $1,500, $2,200 bills for a catalytic converter, a new front brake, whatever it is. I'm just going to get for the for what you can lease. I'm going to do that, and that's really the issue. So you can have as much in the way of estimates as you want, based on last quarter going to this quarter. You've really got to compare it as going to the top, going to that July 2016. What was happening then, both in the sales, in the de demand, in the deterioration of of the quality of cars. What is there and what's happening when you're selling 16 to 17 million, even if it's down to 15? That is a lot. And I think that's a. We have an auto company now in the portfolio for, for subscribers. We have General Motors, and it's done beautifully. And you, you, and you, know, you look at when you're driving, even the Chevy today is really a, a lovely looking car. That's my Definitely. Opinion. I agree. There's, and, there's yeah. so many good cars almost. But go ahead. Yeah. You know, so my point was that it's the demand of people saying, you know what, I've had my car for so long, I'm tired of repairs, it's so much cheaper to pay, whatever it is. Now, if you're lucky enough, I mean, my daughter uh, leased a car last year, she had no down deposit, no after payment, just, I think, 190 a month yeah, or something. Yeah, and I leased a car myself, and it's for a similar reason, where at least you can um, plan out no unexpected repairs to that degree right where you have a monthly right. cost no you know no unexpected repairs because i agree you get one or two repairs over the course of a year of any it's, substantial you're, you're degree up your gain, yeah. and, and it's and it you know pays for itself completely in terms of not having to deal with that in terms of paying a higher whether it's monthly and, and they're great deals i agree they're great deals for sure and a lot of those companies are not necessarily subsidizing those deals but Guess what? They want to push out those leases because they count as a full sale um, for a brand new car. And that's a way that they've kind of factored in a new way to sell new automobiles is to sell them into, you know, you're not even selling a new car because guess what? Like you said, no down payment, very affordable, no, very little barrier to entry. As opposed to sometimes buying a brand new car, you're going to have that down payment. You're going to have, you know, that type of credit issue whether you're just taking on a full twenty dollars thirty thousand dollar loan and you've guaranteed yourself a twenty percent discount as you drive it out right no <laughs> i agree showroom. i do so yeah and look at all the o'reilly automotive parts yeah. 292.84 back in july of 2016 bam comes down to the 170s is trading now at 207 these are big hits they can bounce but i think there will just be bounces at least for now so yeah i can understand what, that and what i always look at and just like the amazon factor is that any item that is just indistinguishable among price um, you know where auto parts seem like something that is ripe for just online delivery at the cheapest cost for the part number you know anybody knows yes. if you know auto parts there's a part number right you can go Absolutely. search the internet for that yes. part number that seems Except like they are getting more and more complicated so I agree I am not uh, very hip with car um, fixes and that is why I choose to do a lease because it's a tough market you know you don't know what you're doing it's tough to gauge prices it's tough to compete so by taking that out of the equation completely um, I just pay a lease payment and I don't have to worry about it let's jump to Tesla real quick so I just wanted to take a peek because that oh, kind of combines yes. combines yes. everything we're talking about with technology with cars with innovation um, down 8.80 at 376 made a peak D in the daily making an arch formation in the weekly and a leg D in the monthly and that's what I that's what I've been trying to focus on for subscribers we are not playing any of the the big the big caps like the Google's the Amazon's I showed Amazon just a moment ago it's made at least a short to intermediate term top uh, Tesla I think is in the process of uh, having a retracement and it's 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 problematic because um, the chart is saying it's really struggling although it's close to all-time highs and I think that what you're looking at here is that the rotation in the market is selectively avoiding the stocks that were the very best and they're going you're going for look at the, you know, the way DuPont I mean Dow DuPont has acted you're looking at different areas and I that's why I just wanted to say that Tesla to me looks a little bit it's not I would I personally wouldn't short it because <laughs> Musk has a way of coming out yeah with, 
Be, statement said. <laughs> right, because yeah, shorting Tesla is just a, a wild right. man's game at, the, at any point right. recently, but yeah. But I'm not sure I'd be buying it right here. I, I, I'd probably want to look at it again because it's, it's a fantastic car. It is an interesting level yeah. how it's coming up to those yeah. highs, right? You know, when we yep. approach that around July, those highs of 375, 380, wherever we are. And so we're kind of reapproaching those levels and we'll see where it trades. Um, you know, and it, just fundamentally, we're talking about leases. I'm in my lease, so a three year lease. It's about a year and a half, maybe. So I have about a year and a half left in that least and I've kind of contemplated that I don't think I will go into just another standard lease only because technology is moving so fast so in a year and a half if I get into a lease that's gonna push me four and a half years out and I really think that you know at that point and even in a year and a half you're gonna start having the model threes from Tesla coming out right and so the competition to the model threes there are some fabulous smaller cars slightly smaller that are doing the great uh, General Motors. Yeah, Chevy well. Volt, all, you yeah, know, very right. comparable. I I would love to never pay for gasoline ever again, you know? So we'll see. That's, but I'm going to look at it, so that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. We're, it's on the horizon. It's going to be here quicker before anybody realizes it, I think. I think so. All right, come on back, folks. One more session. We'll be back. Dow up 25 points. We'll be right back in three minutes. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge for daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Think or Swim is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Learn how to trade options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or Swim. Next on TFNN. <laughs>
Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien, Basil Chapman, Dow up 28 points, NASDAQ up three points, S&P up one point as we are kind of hanging tight. You have Trump speaking to the United Nations right now. You have a Fed meeting starting today. Lots of action and a relatively calm market to go with it. So what are we looking at um, at 12 o'clock, Basil, for the Tiger Technicians Hour? So in my show, I'm going to do a couple of things. If, I, if you don't mind, I'm just going to run this quickly. Please. We're in the leg C in the Dow. My, my, my methodology essentially looks for the fourth highest peak and that's where you really take your foot off the accelerator, put your hover over the brake, and you just have the yellow light goes on. You don't have to do anything, but that's where I want to reassess everything. So by later in the week, I think I'll have to make a decision whether we take profits or whether we go to the short side, or whether I split it and make one a longer term position, etc. So that's going to be the big decision to make. And as long as the stochastic at 98% stays flat in the daily chart, that and the S&P is the same thing, it means you've got very good support for the Dow. That support will be about 200 points lower. And let's see what happens. But this is interesting. We were talking about bonds before you're talking about um, uh, right aid. Well, look at the bonds. The TLT made this peak D. I spoke about Ds. It made the D top at 129.57, pulling back. It's taken out the up channel support. And yet the, the weekly chart is still hovering at the 125.93 area. So I, I, I don't have a sell signal yet or even a buy signal um, based on uh, the weekly charts or the monthly. But I do have in the daily, it's in a sell mode. So the 125 area is going to be critical. What's really important to me, you spoke about gold. My contention for about two weeks now has been that gold, silver, bonds, and uh, some others could be pulling back. But we should see a rally in the crude oil and in yields and in the market. So, so far, that's working out. We'll see what happens. Lots of good covered in those three minutes there, Basil. Perfect. Well, we look forward to the show at 12 o'clock, and thanks for joining me on the program, man. I always appreciate My it. My pleasure, as always. Thank Definitely. You. Okay, folks, stay tuned. Swim lessons coming up right now, and then our man Basil Chapman back here at 12 o'clock, and Tom will be in here for his show this afternoon. Have a great day. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.